I'd like to focus on one of his foundational virtues, one that made possible his personal sanctity as well as his famously fruitful pastoral work, the virtue of perseverance. This is one of the most important virtues for all of us as Christians. We live in an age in which many people give up. We give up on prayer. We give up on the Mass. We give up on fighting sin. We give up on the sacrament of confession. We give up on our marriages. We give up on suffering. We give up on religious vows. And priests often give up on their priestly vocations. I'm sure all of us have experienced the pain of seeing a friend or a family member give up on the practice of the faith and begin to live a life of sin. These experiences point to why the virtue of perseverance is so important. Never to give up, never to stop running the race, to fighting the good fight, to keeping the faith and growing in faith. Jesus told us in the gospel that the one who endures to the end will be saved. And St. Paul in his second letter to St. Timothy talks about the choice before us at every moment as a choice between perseverance and denial. He says, if we endure, we shall reign with Christ. But if we deny him, he will deny us. We face that choice every day. The more we choose to persevere, the better Christians we will be. St. Paul said that suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces character. And that character produces hope. And that hope doesn't disappoint because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, which has been given to us. It's perseverance that will forge our character to be like Christ's, to be like the holy martyrs, men and women like us who remained faithful under the severest of trial. St. John Vianney was someone who excelled in the virtue of perseverance and from whom we all have so much to learn. I'd like to begin by describing how he grew in this virtue throughout his life and then I'd like to turn to how he tried to help his parishioners and ours acquire this needed virtue. My hope is that we'll all learn something from him to help us to endure to the end with Christ. When we look at the virtue of perseverance in the life of St. John Vianney, we first should know that this is the way most priests and future priests come to relate to him. Most of us read the life of the Cory of ours for the first time when we're discerning a vocation of the priesthood or when we're in our first years of seminary. His chronicle of perseverance through so many obstacles serves as a powerful inspiration to us when we're struggling through academic or formational or other challenges. The fact that the future patron saint of priests was once kicked out of the seminary is, after all, a great reason why we should continue through our studies even when we're struggling like he struggled throughout all of his. Because of the French Revolution's elimination of Catholic schools and the erection of indoctrination academies they called schools, young John Vianney received very little formal schooling. When he started studying for the priesthood at the age of 19 in the parish school of Father Charles Bale, he could read at just an elementary level. It's not that he was unintelligent, he was just uneducated, but most of his much younger fellow students didn't know the difference. No matter how hard Vianney labored, and he did so diligently for months, he couldn't master Latin. He eventually thought it better for him to return home than to continue to frustrate both his teacher as well as his fellow students. This was the first time he thought it could be over for him. Father Ballet, however, as a wise old priest, persuaded him not to quit. So St. John Vianney responded by praying. He made a 120-mile round-trip pilgrimage up to a mountain shrine dedicated to the great Jesuit St. Francis Regis, begging through his intercession that he might learn enough Latin to be able to continue doing theology. And he returned no longer dismayed, dedicated to work even harder to acquire that skill. As he began to apply himself once more, though, his studies were interrupted when he was drafted into the Napoleonic army. An 18-month odyssey that was the second time his vocation was almost ended but he persevered on. After he had returned, Father Bally was impatient to see this much older candidate move formally to the seminary to do the one year of philosophy and two years of theology that were required at the time prior to ordination. 
When he began his philosophy studies, Vianney found that he couldn't even understand the Latin questions posed by the priest professor who was younger than he was. With a few others, he was separated for classes in French. But despite his increased comprehension, he still received on his report card the overall grade of weak student to the extreme. Thanks be to God, we haven't received report cards like that. He persevered through it, however. But after six months, the faculty came to the conclusion that there was no hope at all that he would ever know enough Latin to become a priest. So they kicked him out of the seminary. Think about it for a second. They kicked the future patron saint of the clergy from the seminary. Is he pious? Does he have a devotion to Our Lady? Does he know how to say the rosary? Upon being told by Father Bally that the young Vianney was exemplary in his piety, Monsignor Corbin prophetically replied, Very well then, I summon him to come up for ordination. The grace of God will do the rest. The grace of God, which had helped St. John Vianney persevere until then, did in fact do the rest. First, he persevered in prayer. He would do all-night vigils in his church there in ours, praying for the conversion of his parish, begging God for the help he needed to be a good pastor. There's a great lesson here for all of us. Jesus, of course, used to pray unceasingly at night. Sometimes we can become content merely saying our prayers, but God wants more. We're not called necessarily to imitate the quarry of ours and sleeping fewer than two hours a night for 41 years in order to pray. But we're called to persevere in the presence of God. 